Hey guys, this is Joshua Jebe here again with another Unreal Development Kit tutorial. And today we're going to talk about uh, using bump offset to create a noise in a material to create a simple fire effect. Now we're going to use two texture samples in the material. And uh, we're going to use vertex coloring to colorize the material in Cascade. So it'll be a quick and dirty uh, introduction to Cascade, which is the visual effects editor in Unreal Engine 3. And finally, we'll go ahead and implement it in game. Hope you enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so I've got Photoshop open and I have basically two textures that I'm going to use for this um, very, very, very simple effect. Uh, again, this is nothing complicated and if I really wanted to go in into more detail, uh, I wouldn't just use um, a fire clip art you know, that I found online. I'd probably find an AVI and create a flipbook. That'll be a different tutorial. But for now what we have is a fire opacity map and uh, we've got a noise map and this noise map is going to be used to give some noise and some randomness to my fire pacing map. So I've opened up the editor uh, we're going to go to the content browser and uh, this is the package that I imported my textures to so here's my fire pacing map and here's my noise map now what we're going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to go ahead and um, I've already actually created the material so I'm going to kind of dissect the material uh, for you guys instead of creating it from scratch and we'll see how this this works so what I've done first is I've created two texture samples here and the first one is going to go into the emissive and the second one is going to go into the opacity now the reason that I have two different texture samples is because the UVs of this bottom one the, opa the one that's being plugged into the opacity are being modified by the bump offset you notice that I've got this going right into the UVs. So what the bump offset is doing is taking this, um, the composite of these two uh, texture samples that are multiplied together. And uh, let's see here if I can dissect this a little further. So I've got it's, uh, the, basically the same noise map referenced in both of these, um, but I have different settings for the texture coordinates and the panning speed. So for the top one, my texture coordinate is set to 0.5.5 which means that it's being tiled uh, by a factor of a half uh, in the U and the V space and I'm sp panning it at an upward speed of 0.6 for the bottom one you can see that it's being tiled a little bit less so at a U and a v uh, my U and V are being tiled at 0.1 and I'm probably panning it also slower so the composite of these two when I multiply them is going to generate um, basically the, the noise that I want for my bump offset and so let me take this off what you'll notice is that when I'm not using the bump offset um, my it just looks like a normal emissive uh, texture by the way I am additive and unlit for the material when I add the bump offset it uses this noise map to actually offset the UVs and gives us this interesting random effect on the uh, fire which, you know, I mean, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time on this material, but as you can see, it has a lot of potential. So if you really wanted to spend a lot of time, say use the flip book or something a little bit more uh, complicated, you can get some really, really uh, effective results. So the last group here that I want to talk about is this vertex color grouping here. And I briefly mentioned this in my uh, previous tutorial. But what the vertex color allows you to do is to colorize the effect in Cascade. You'll notice that right now my effect is uh, essentially looks like it's in grayscale or something. Uh, you can find vertex, uh, vertex color in constants. And uh, of something to note here that if you are going to be using um, this material, if this material is going to be applied to a sprite in Cascade, you want to use vertex color. If you're going to use this material on a mesh, you want to use a mesh emitter vertex color uh, otherwise you won't be able to colorize in Cascade. So with both the vertex color and mesh emitter vertex color um, you want to plug in the RGB output and multiply it uh, basically in the final step before plugging it into the emissive or diffuse and you want to multiply the opacity or the alpha excuse me of the vertex color with the um, node that's going to be plugged into the opacity channel of the material. So let's go ahead and save this and we're going to go ahead and look at the visual effect that I've created to correspond with this material. 
and we'll go over here and we'll go ahead and open it up and uh, what we're presented with is Cascade, the Visual Fix Editor in Unreal, uh, the Unreal Development Kit. So a quick rundown here, um, we've got the no, uh, module based uh, editor uh, here on the top right and on the top left we have the preview window and we can toggle the grid on and off, we can save a thumbnailing, well, we can restart the effect, um, it's useful if your effect is not looping like this one is, um, and so on and so forth, um, they're all pretty self-explanatory at the top. Uh, the bottom left here is our um, properties window, and this is where we modify all the properties of the modules. So if I click on a module, we can expand um, all the properties and uh, edit them either manually or in some cases we can actually go over here and, um, <clears throat> for example, in this module if you wanted to modify the color of a life, we could uh, get a graphical preview in the graph editor of what the color is doing over the lifespan of the uh, particle effect. So um, I'll go ahead and collapse these. This is a particle uh, emitter, and uh, the way that you add a new sprite emitter is you right click and you add a new particle sprite emitter. And uh, just to show you what you get, uh, you'll get this as a default sprite. So you'll get a default material, which is this funky cross looking thing. You'll get it up um, being, up, you know, uh, having applied an initial velocity in the positive x direction with some randomness in the y and the z. I'm sorry, the positive z direction with some randomness in the positive x and y. And um, you get initial size and lifetime. So I'll go ahead and delete these. What I've done here is I've um, modified this material so that when I rotate it, I'll, I'll add the grid for some reference here. When I rotate it up, um, I've, I've got this lock axis set to EPAL rotate Z so that uh, it's not always camera oriented. So if I got rid of this, what you would see, you, what you notice is that it's always uh, oriented towards the camera. Unfortunately, this is sort of a 3D effect, and when it's in the world, I want it to be able to have the effect that it's sort of um, staying true to the. Uh, orientation uh, in relationship to rotating around the z-axis. So uh, even though it looks a little flat here, we're going to compensate by adding uh, another emitter later. Another thing you'll notice is that um, I've applied the material to it that I just created, the torch fire material, but it's not white. I've colorized it orange, and the way that I've done that is through this color over life module. So you can add modules by right-clicking and uh, adding uh, whichever module you would like, and there's you see tons of different modules that will allow you to uh, add accelerations to particles, um, all, anything from modifying the color to how the you know the effects in the particles are going to move, to how they spawn, to um, the size of them, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the lifetime. So uh, I've added a, um, a color over life module which I've set to um, 10, 2, and 0.5 in the color uh, tab, uh, in the color over life tab. So what this kind of translates to, this is a, this sort of translates to R and G and B, the X, Y, and Z. So I've added 10 in the R, 2 in the blue, and 0.5 in the uh, green. And so you'll notice that if I change this to 1, 1, 1, I get the material that I initially had uh, which was not colorized. So you'll notice that if you don't add the vertex color node in the material, you're not going to be able to change the color um, like I'm doing here. So it's very important that you add that. Okay, great. So um, I've changed the color. I have it locked to the um, rotate Z axis now. Uh, what I want to do next is add a, another component to this effect. So I'll go ahead to this collapsed um, uh, particle emitter. And I'll go ahead and turn it on, and I'll show you uh, kind of what what I did here. So with this off, I've sort of added um, this is a, basically the same material um, with a different opacity map, sort of a cloud texture. Um, it's using again the same bump offset. Um, actually, it's identical to the material minus the texture sample used. And what this is doing is this is actually screen oriented. Uh, so no matter what angle I look at it, um, it's going to be oriented towards the screen. So basically I just uh, didn't add the lock axis. And what this is going to do is that when I rotate it up, it kind of still gives it that, that volume 
So when I'm looking at it from above, it still feels like it has some volume and some um, mass to it. Uh, it doesn't give me that flat effect, even though you can still kind of see it. But you know what, this effect is going to be seen from such a far away distance that uh, you know I just want to make it cheap and I want to make it um, effective. So I've colorized it the same way. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the second part of this effect.